Hi there, Jono here. So in this video we're going to go over how to set the OpenDNS service on OpenSense. On OpenDNS's website, we'll click on the Learn More button under the Consumer section, then we'll sign up as a new home user. Now, just as a note, the password can't be too complex or have the too many special characters. It can only have the exclamation at or the hash characters. If you use any other one, it will not accept your password when trying to log into it. So make sure you use something more basic like this. You can continue to create your OpenDNS account. Once you've created the account, we need you add it as a network. So we'll click add a network button. It will show your current RP address at the top. We'll click add this network. And then we will give it a name. In this example, I'm going to call it home. If you have a dynamic IP address, you can tick this on and off. In this case, I'll leave it on as I'll show you what happens. You can click done. Once it has added, we can click on the stats icon next to it. From there, we need to enable stats. Now, for the setup, I would recommend enabling it, but if you don't want it to log your DNS queries, you can turn it off at a later stage. We can then go to the web content filtering. This is where you can create or select what block list you want to use for your DNS requests. So OpenDNS has a few pre-made lists, or you can use their custom option where you can choose what list you want to use. But for this tutorial or guide, I'm just going to create our own ones just so that it's easier to show you that it's working. So I'm going to add DuckDuckGo and then Facebook and we'll use those two web addresses for examples. Now once that is done we can go over to our OpenSense instance and just to show you if you go under system, settings and then general make sure that the DNS servers are blank and that the override option is ticked off. The open DNS service will fill that in for us later. Then I want to go to unbound DNS, make sure that the block list is off and then any uh, DNS forwarders I just want to delete. So in this case I've got a DNS over TLS, I'll delete that. And then if I go to query forwarders, I'm going to delete the one I have. We now need to add OpenDNS's servers. So if we go back to OpenDNS and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see their two IP addresses. We will copy and paste that. Once we've got them, we can apply it. Once that is done, we can now go to the OpenDNS service on the left. Yeah, from there, we can enable the service. Since this is not a standalone server, we'll leave it ticked off. Your username is the email address you used to sign up and then you'll put your password. The network is the name we gave the network when we created it in OpenDNS. So in this case, it is home. You can save it and then click the test and update button to apply it. If everything goes well, you'll see good and then you'll see your current IP address. As you can see, this has changed from the IP address that I used to create the network on OpenDNS. If you go back to system settings general, you'll now see that the OpenDNS service has added its IP addresses to the list, so don't delete those. 
When you go back to OpenDNS's website and refresh, you will notice that the IP address would have changed to your new address. After a few minutes, you can retry it and you should get a page showing certificate error. So we know that OpenDNS is now blocking the website. However, since the certificate is incorrect, we need to install OpenDNS's certificate. So on their support page, I'll leave a link in the description. They show you how to install the certificates for each different browser and operating system. But the main thing you need to do is if you scroll right to the bottom of the page, there'll be a link where you can download these certificates. So I'm going to right click and go save as. Unfortunately, OBS wasn't recording all the windows, but if you click import, it's opening up an explorer where I'm selecting the certificate and importing the certificate to Firefox. Once imported, I will refresh the page and we should be presented with the Cisco block page. Just to show you, there is an option to customize the block page. However, I tried to customize it and I just couldn't get this to work or I'm not understanding how it's supposed to work. So how I understand it is whatever item is blocked, it should either use that image that we have uploaded or if you customize the message in the block page, it should show that message. However, I was unable to get it to work. I'm going to delete the domains and then we can test again to see if we have access to it. Now just to note, if you see that it doesn't update even after a couple of minutes, it's most probably that this is cached. So if we go back to unbound DNS, under general, tick the flush DNS cache after reload and then click apply. This will flush the DNS cache. So now if we go back to try DuckDuckGo, it should load straight away. Okay, I just want to show you a few extras that you can do in OpenDNS. Under advanced settings, you can turn smart cache on and off and dynamic RP update on and off if you have a static RP. And then under security, you can enable or disable extra features like malware blocking, for example. And of course, under web filtering, you can change or add your different filters. If we go under stats and we clicked on the block domains, you will see a list of all the domains that are currently being blocked or have been blocked. If you select one, you'll have the options to unblock it or to block other domains that are similar to it. We can also go to things like total requests and you can just see the stats of all the requests and other things that they offer. So thank you for watching. If this video helped you, please consider liking and subscribing. I would appreciate it. And then until then, I'll see you in the next one.